I'm David Sorgholm with OpenReview.net. We're doing a, a very similar experiment uh, in the realm of computer science conferences, um, which I know is not in your domain, so we're not competing or anything. Um, but uh, in the process of designing uh, our system, we found that there were a whole bunch of decisions we had to make about the, the publication process. What was the policy going to be? Um, and one, uh, one spot of difference in the conference that we just hosted anyway um, is that the reviews were open, but the identities of the reviewers were hidden. So the reviewers are allowed to be anonymous. Uh, so this is just one example, and I'm curious um, if there's some process that you all went through, I guess this question is mostly for Vitek and Rebecca, um, uh, to choose the policy um, that you ended up implementing. Um, did you decide that for some reason it really was important for reviewers to be non-anonymized, uh, or is that just, uh, was that your intuition you wanted to try it out? Uh, and the following question is, uh, are you aiming towards something else? Is, is the current policy a stepping stone? The reviewers. You try to make it anonymous. Yeah, the, the, the reviewers are not anonymous in our. I, I understand that. So th the question was, um, how did you get? It? How did you get to that to, to that decision? Not specifically that decision, but just the whole process that you designed. Was there some procedure? I don't know, focus groups or something, uh, or is it is it your intuition about how things ought to be? I think you know the the, the guiding principle of everything that we're doing now is openness. Openness. So we, we maximalists in openness. Mm -hmm. We try not to compromise on the issues of openness. And uh, so, uh, and we not really believe in, you know, um, a long and complex discussion. It's so, so we try and we see what happens and if it will be a disaster, we will change it, but we try. And I think um, it is important that uh, it is always known. You see, there is problem with referring inherent problem with refereeing. Referees are your competitors, almost always. That's just, uh, just nature of the fact. And it cannot be otherwise because are the people who understand what you do. Uh, for this to be done in secret is simply wrong. Somehow it seems to be simply wrong and we reach that conclusion without complex discussion. We just sort of felt that's how it is. And meanwhile, it, there, we don't, the, the experience meanwhile doesn't suggest that we have to go to draw. We have very little objection. It's not no more difficult to get uh, referees. Maybe easier than before. Uh, just one thing to add to that is is by having uh, you you said about having the comments public, but not having the names public. By having the names public, then I, I would argue it means that those individuals have to stand by what they've put out there, and I think that's very important. And it, it seems uh, there's been a number of experiments looking at this, and I think everybody that's tried doing this, and including ourselves, have found that the referee reports are much more constructive as a result of that. So. You know, one issue of this conflict of interest, which was very interesting, we actually had an experience where we ask referees to declare that they have no conflict of interest to refer in this paper. And we had a situation in which somebody said, hey, it's not true, this guy has a conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. And this openness, it reveals those things. You can't hide. I think that one of the great things will be when Can you go to the microphone? Sorry. I think one of the great things will be is when altmetrics start applying to the reviewers. So, I mean, now you have altmetrics applying to the authors and papers. Altmetrics are the social media, online, you know, value of a paper that Faculty 1000 is leading in, actually, having people openly say, this is good, this is bad, this is why. And I think when the reviewers start getting their own scores, good re constructive reviews and helpful reviews, um, that will mean that you've turned the corner. And, and I think it's going to take a while to get there, I agree. I mean, I like the optimistic, it's happening, but I think it's going to have to happen, and that has to be open for, for that to happen. Yeah, I, I, I could say that, you know, I'm a, I'm a section editor for the Journal of Immunology, and we have to give feedback on reviewers, you know, but they don't see that feedback, actually. It's, it's all internal to the journal, actually, and we use it to kind of help decide what the journal does, to decide who's going to review the papers in the future, but actually reviewers don't get that feedback. So I, I, I think that's... But one fascinating thing is to see how well written and how extensive some of the comments on papers are. And people knowing that their review is, go that their review is going to be read, uh, read by the authors and others actually motivates them to do a better. It would, yeah, it would actually make some reviewers better reviewers. So, the, so being a senior editor uh, you know, in clinical, for clinical cancer research, it, you know, the, the way I grade people, I mean, if they could see what it is that's associated in an anonymous way, 
with an excellent you know, reviewer status, it would likely shape how they react. Yeah, I, I had one today, it was five pages long, <coughs> and that I had to wade through. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's, not, it's not really the best use of my time. You know? <laughs> Uh, another thing, actually, to add uh, that relates to your point about the help metrics is by having the reviews public with the names of the referees means that those referees can actually get formal credit, finally, for doing all that work. And in fact, they can co-referee it. So a lot of reviewers will use this as a way of training more junior scientists as to how to critically analyse a paper. And they can also co-referee and get formal credit for it as well. So it opens up a lot of interesting possibilities. Just for what's worth, I want to say I completely agree that the reviewers' names uh, should be open. Uh, in this case, the chairs of the conference that we were hosting insisted on reviewer anonymity. Um, and the reason was they were concerned about all kinds of uh, issues of you know, people being afraid of retribution if they made a negative comment and um, you know, bias about of one form or another. Um, and so I think, uh, you know, much as we in the room might, might agree that we, we want to achieve the maximal openness, there's certainly a lot of, of uh, social concern, I guess, until people get used to the idea um, that there might be all kinds of negative consequences. I mean, even, even on having the author names be open, um, right? There's, there have been studies showing that female authors get published less for no apparent reason, <laughs> except that their names are on the paper. Um, and, and so the idea of maximal openness, maybe we should temper to some extent when, when these kinds of issues uh, come into play.